Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll focus on adding in the audio. So adding in the music samples uh, that will play when we hit each key. And we'll also focus on giving each key its own color so that we don't always get these orange fading to yellow and then green, but we'll have some that are purple, some that are blue, as you can see here, all different colors. But it's always the same color for any given key, like H is always this orange. Q is always this, that's T, Y, and so on. Okay, so to get started, we'll just figure out how we can play a sound at all. So um, just how we trigger a sound using Howler.js. And Howler is basically the opposite of Paper.js as far as um, its complexity. It's really, really simple, which makes it really nice. Again, you can play audio without a library, but it is a little bit it's a little painful when you want to do something um, like what we want to do, where we're not just playing a sound one time, but I want to be able to trigger a sound 10 times in a row. Like, let's say I'm doing this clap here. I want to be able to do something like... There's a little bit of, of work involved to making that actually behave the way that we want it to. Um, it's really easy to play a sound, like play a song which is really annoying, but if you go onto a website and there's a, you know, some sort of sound or song that's playing in the background, that's really simple to do with HTML and JavaScript. But to do something like this where we can have a bunch of simultaneous sounds going and we can repeat things, and that would be a lot easier to use something like Howler.js. So again, not impossible. Like anything that a library does, you can do it yourself, but we wouldn't really want to. So if we take a look at how it works, this is all that we'll need to use. This little bit of code here, where we create a new howl. So howl is the uh, thing that we're initializing, new howl. And then we give it a list of URLs of the uh, files that we want it to play. So, so the reason that we give it an array of these different URLs, different files, even though they look like they're the same, they're just different file types. And the order that you put them in is the order that uh, Howler will try and load them in. So basically, there are certain file types that will work in every browser, some of them that won't work in every browser, so you can specify certain backups. We're not going to do that, we'll just have a single file, but if you wanted to have backups, basically, the way that it works, as far as I know at least, we can read about it here, I'm sure. Here we go, URLs. The source URLs to the track, or tracks, to be loaded for the sound. These should be in order of preference. Howler.js will automatically load the first one that is compatible with the current browser. So there you go. We could add in other versions of the same song, or in our case, the same sample, and Howler would automatically load the first one that's compatible. Okay, so the code that we need though is new Howl, and then a URL, and that's it. And then when we're ready to play it, we just call dot .play, as you can see here. And we won't be stopping it, we won't be pausing, we won't be looping, because our sounds are really short. So we just want them to play, and we'll let them finish out. Each one is about somewhere between half a second and a second. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and download that zip file that has all the sounds, and drag it into the um, same directory where you've been writing your code. So inside of sounds, we have all these files. All right, and the next thing we need to do is install Howler in order to use it. So you can download it, but just for variety's sake, I'll use a CDN. So I just did a search for Howler CDN. Let's copy this first URL here. You could always test it out, see if it is valid. Here we go. Here's the code that is for Howler. Perfect. Let's go back to our app. And then we'll just add in a script. So after paper, you can duplicate that and just change the source to be the Howler URL. Let's make sure it loads OK without any issue. Perfect. Next, let's actually make our first Howl. So let's copy this code again from Howler. Just take this first one right here. And let's do it um, up top to start. So we'll just do it right here. And we'll say var sound equals new Howl. And then we'll just put in one file. And let's do the first one that we see, so bubbles.mp3. So that's inside the sounds directory slash bubbles.mp3. So sounds slash 
bubble. I already forgot if it was bubbles. There we go, it is pluralized. So sound slash bubbles.mp3, and that's all we need. And let's not play it right away. Let's just create that, that's all we need to do. And then to play it, let's just play it when you press a key down. So it's sound.play. Really nice and simple. Let's take a look, try it out. There we go. So every key, I'm pressing a bunch of different keys now, triggers that sound. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too annoying. So next up, let's focus on adding in another sound. So we'll just do two to start. So we have bubbles, let's do clay.mp3. So what we could do is just duplicate this and do a sound two equals new howl and we'll do sound slash clay dot mp3 and then what we'll do in here is have an if statement so let's focus on two keys let's do a and s so if you press a if key is a then we'll play sound and let's call it sound one just to make it clearer if key is s let me put quotes around this as well then we'll play sound two. So to tell what key was pressed, it's really easy with paper.js. We have this event object here, and all we need to do is um, event.key. So we'll just write an if statement, if event.key equals a, then we'll just do a play sound one, so that's sound one dot play. And then do the same thing. If event.key equals equals s, then we'll do play sound2, so sound2.play, just like that. So we can try that out. So only key a, keys a and s should trigger things. So I'll tell you right now, I'm hitting q. Oh, it looks like we have an error. What are we getting here? Oh, sound is not defined. Ignore these warnings here for now. We will be fixing those at the very end. It's a more complex issue, but it actually won't get in the way of our code working to start. But this will. So, silly error. I was referencing sound right here. We don't have sound anymore. Okay. So now, nothing should play when I hit most keys, but I'll hit A. Okay. Other keys, and now I'll hit S. So we have A and S. Perfect. And what we could do as well is now assign a color to each one. So we could do something like this. Let's move this to the bottom of the same on key down, but right before we push, we could have something like this. If event out key is A, play that sound, and we can set the color of new circle dot fill color equals, and then we can give it a color like 2C, 3E, 5, 0. And then do the same thing if we press S, but with a different color, like let's do 16A, 0, 8, 5. And then we can have an else. And hopefully you're thinking to yourself, this probably isn't the best way of doing this. It might be okay for two. A and S, but what about 20, 30, or 50 keys? If we use the entire keyboard and all different characters, that would be a lot of code. But let me just show you right now. So Q, most colors, or most keys, don't play a sound, and they give us the same color. Now if I hit A, whoops, I hit two keys. A gives us a slightly different color, and S gives us a blue. So of course the color that I picked here is hard to t is hard to see. Let me change this to be purple. And technically, we should make this an else if. So we'll check if key is A, else if, and else. If we have two if statements, this one will run, and then we have another if. And if that's not true, then the else will be true, but it won't take into account this one up here. So if we only want one of these to be true, which is we only want one color, purple 
this blue or orange, then we want them to be part of one if statement. But it doesn't really matter because we are going to change this in just a second. But now I refresh. Here's normal keys. If I hit A though, we get purple. I hit S, we get blue. And two different sounds. Okay, so that's how we use Howler. Now we want to do this for every single key. And there's a much better way than what we have here. So I'm actually going to get rid of all of this. Because we could, as I mentioned earlier, have an if statement for every single key. If key is A, do this. If key is B, and for every single key, but that's really not a good practice. So what we'll do instead is define an object. And we'll just call it key data. And it's an object. And this is what it will look like. So we'll have a key like A. And then when A is pressed, we'll say that color should be purple and that sound should be, and let's just put this entire thing in there. So I'll go over this in just a second. Let me put this here first. And then we can do the exact same thing again for S. So when S is pressed, color should be green and sound should be new howl, same thing, URLs, and let's do sound slash clay dot mp3. And then we could do that for every single key. And yes, it's a lot of syntax here, but the advantage is that we have one place where all of our data is defined. And then we don't need an if statement or an, a separate conditional for every single key. All that we have to do is take, where are you? Event dot key, which I actually got rid of. Take this right here, event dot key, which is the key that was pressed. And let's say that that's the letter A. If that's the case, we just take it and plug it into key data, and that will give us color purple sound is this sound. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's just go with these two examples. And to make it more obvious, let's add in one more. I'll duplicate what we have. So we have A and S, let's also do D. And color can be, uh, let's do yellow. And then sound, what else do we have? Let's do confetti. Perfect. Get rid of this trailing comma. We can get rid of this now. And we'll need to change this around a little bit. And the next thing that we'll want to do is take that event.key and plug it in to our key data. So we could do something like this, key data bracket event.key and that would give us, for if, if s was event.key, it gives us this entire thing here. And then we can do dot color. So we can start there. So what we'll do is before we push new circle in, we'll just say new circle dot fill color equals key data event dot key dot color. So just to reiterate, event dot key is a letter. Well, in our case, we'll make sure it's a letter. It technically could be a number or shift or tab, but it's the key that was pressed. Then we take that and plug it into key data. We get this entire thing out if event dot key is A, if the user pressed A. Then we're doing dot color, which gives us purple. So then we're setting new circle dot fill color to be purple if event dot key is a. But notice we don't have to have an if statement to do that. So we don't have to say if event dot key is a do this, if event dot key is s do this. This is the same line no matter what because we have this one dictionary or this one source of our data defined. There is a problem of course. This will only work for a, s, and d right now. So I'll show you. Refresh, make sure we don't have any syntax errors. We do, cannot read color, or cannot read property color of undefined, and that's not a syntax error. That's the error that I'm expecting, so I'll show you. I'll press A, we're good. I press A, or S, we're also good, and D, but now I press Q, and we have a problem. And that's because this is undefined. Key data of Q doesn't exist. We have A, S, and D. So that's a problem. The way to fix that is simple. All we'll do is check if, do this right here up top, 
inside of that key press if key data bracket event dot key. So remember, if this is truthy, basically if it exists, then we'll do all of this. Otherwise, if it doesn't exist, we won't do anything to start. Well, actually, we won't do anything at all. So right now, our app will only work, we'll do anything, or only do anything when we press A, S, and D. So just to go back, let's make sure that works now. Q, nothing happens. I'm pressing a bunch of keys. Now I hit A, and it works S and D, but no other key does anything. Great. So now let's get the sound to play. So that's also nice and simple. We just need key data event.key.sound. And I'm not sure why I named these two sounds. That should have been sound. There we go. Dot sound dot play. Remember, event.key plugs into this. Let's say we press D. We get this object. We do dot sound on it. We get this, which we then run dot play on just like before. Okay. Let's give it a shot. A, S, D. And the other keys don't do anything. Perfect. So all we have left to, to do here is really just add in all of our other keys. And that would be really painful for you to watch me type from scratch. I have that pre-done. I gave you the file in the download. I called it data.js. So if we open that up, it's just a giant object that has all of the letter keys. So we have Q, W, E, R. They're not really in any order. Well, they are, but no particular order as far as colors and sounds. I just picked random ones, and they each have a color. So if we copy this and replace what we have here, make sure we call it key data. Perfect. We've now provided this dictionary of sound and colors for every single key, every single um, alphabet key at least, and we can use that. We don't have to change our code at all. So it's really nice. If we want to add in numeric keys, we want to add in tab and shift and escape and whatever else, we just add in extra properties on this object. So let's try it out. Close that down, refresh. Perfect. All right, I won't get carried away here. It's pretty fun though. Okay, all right, that's enough. So we've covered a lot, but at the end of the day, all we really did was take some code that we found to make a circle. We took some code that we found to animate a circle to change the color. We found some code to do events, so when you press a key, and then we combine that with some other code we found to play some music. And when you put it together, you can make some cool things. And there's a lot more you could do here. And we're not 100% done. We are done with the functionality, so we're not adding in any new features. It won't look any different. But if you do open up the console, you'll see we get all of these cannot load files, XML, HTTP request, cross origin, blah, blah, blah. I'll cover that in the next video. I'll talk about why that's happening. And I'll also show you how we can fix it. And then the other thing that we'll do is talk about a small way of refactoring this. Because right now, every time I press a key, I'm adding a new circle to the circles array, and I'm never removing them from that array. So I might have 10,000 in there right now. Well, I don't, but I might have 100 in there, 200. And we're looping over that entire thing, even if we don't see the circles because they're so small. So we'll make a small change to get rid of those in the next video. But again, we're done with the functionality, so if you don't care to see that, you just liked making this and you want to move on, um, go ahead and move on to the next unit.